one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Mary Noel Brazil, beloved wife, mother, sister, and aunt, John Jack Farrell Sr., devoted husband, father, grandfather, United States Navy veteran, and highly respected and beloved coach, and their dear families and many friends they leave behind. Call, please. Here. 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 Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A. Audit status report received from Robert Rossi and Company dated October 3rd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B. Breakdown of the eligible salaries for the liquid fuels account for the months of July, August, and September 2013 in a report received from the controller's office. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, report results of tax assessor's hearing held on September 18, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I do have, uh, I guess I'll read it now rather than in motions. Um, this is for immediate release. And this is the Firefighters Coats for Kids Foundation. The Scranton firefighters engage the community to warm the hearts of children. The Scranton Firefighters Association invites the community to join them to help provide new winter coats to warm the hearts, minds, and bodies of children in need. The fundraising campaign is led by Scranton Firefighters Local 60 to provide at-risk children in Scranton with brand new American-made coats for the winter. This is the first year the Scranton Firefighters have joined forces with national nonprofit Operation Warm to launch the program. Firefighters Coats for Kids, a movement led by firefighters across the United States to combat the effect of childhood poverty while saving American jobs. Each $32 donation will provide a brand new American-made winter coat for a child at John Adams Elementary in Scranton, where nearly 90% of students live at a degree of federal poverty level. Local 60 has been working hard to give back to these children, said Chuck Bartlebaugh, Secretary of Local 60. We hope to gain support from everyone in the community to make this winter a special one. Scranton firefighters hope to continue collecting donations through Friday, October 4th. By nature of our service to the community, we see how poverty affects these children, stated Bartlebaugh. Keeping them warm and safe throughout the winter is the least we can do. Scranton firefighters hope to raise at least $6,400 to provide new winter coats to over 200 children. Just before the Pennsylvania cold sets in, firefighters will surprise the students at John Adams Elementary with their bright new coats, personally fitting each child and helping them to write their names in the interior tag which reads, made especially for you. This is a program that strengthens communities and the overall well-being of children, stated Carrie Palmquist. Executive Director of Operation Warm. A new coat boosts a child's self-esteem and allows families to stretch limited financial resources to other basic necessities, such as food and shelter. To donate to the Scranton Firefighter Coats for Kids, 
The website is www.operationwarm.org slash Scranton. Operation Warm is dedicated to providing new winter coats to U.S. children in need and has reached more than 1.2 million children since 1998. The International Association of Firefighters represents over 300,000 professional firefighters who are dedicated to serving their communities beyond the traditional call of duty. In 2012, Operation Warm joined together with the International Association of Firefighters to form a widespread high-impact program called Firefighters Coats for Kids. The collaboration of these two organizations deepens the reach and support of our efforts as firefighters protecting those in need. And protecting communities across the USA has become the face of this mission and a catalyst for a multi-dimensional program that not only provides coats to impoverished children, but also helps Americans get back to work and out of poverty. So anyone that's interested in uh, helping with this program or making a donation, uh, I'll give you the websites again. www.operationwarm.org, www.firefighterscoatsforkids.org, and I believe that's it. So I would hope uh, your gener generosity will show for our children in Scranton and help the firefighters. Thank you. Councilman McGough is unable to attend tonight's meeting, and we hope he has a speedy and full recovery. Mrs. Craig? Fourth order, citizens' participation. No one has signed our speaker sheet this evening. Is there anyone who cares to address council? <laughs> uh, Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. Um, today, good evening, council. Good evening. Good evening. Today in the paper, they had more of our problems. Uh, with uh, with our finances, and uh, I noted that uh, Pelt seems to think it's a good idea to uh, sell the sewer authority, and seeing as they think it's a good idea, maybe it's not. It's something that's just some food for thought. An excellent uh, documentary. It's available at the Scranton Library. It's called The Corporation, and. It under outlines all of the various dirty deeds that corporations pull, and water companies is one of them. And uh, for instance, uh, during World War II, IBM Corporation calibrated on a monthly basis the uh, punch card machines at the concentration camps as to who was to be terminated. Uh, Exxon Mobil or Standard Oil, sold oil supplies to the Wehrmacht German Army up until 1944. After that, they started asking for gold as payment. Uh, several automotive companies uh, uh, manufactured half-tracks. It was impossible for them to uh, uh, invade certain countries because of the mud and uh, in Germany and they were stalled in 41 and 42 and this way they could get around instead of uh, sinking into a mud bog, mud bog so I mean corporations are good for one thing and that's taking care of themselves so it's really something to consider and I had was very curious I've been noticing that uh, our school district is leasing St. Mary's and uh, school on Pittston Avenue, I guess it is. And I wonder if there's any taxes due on that, seeing as they're getting financial compensation for the school. And it's, it's just, uh, it, it would seem to me that if somebody's turning money on rents, they should pay some taxes on it. The county. 
once again, I'd like to thank them, and I have to get down to a meeting because I'm going to have to have something to say about uh, the, at the commissioners' meeting about their treatment of the city and this council. It's just a shame. They should come here once in a while and face the beat of the drum. Uh, we're getting close to November, so I'd like to remind everybody, get out and vote, inform yourself, and remind them also that most officials in this city are elected by an extreme minority. There's sometimes as little as 20% turnout. So don't complain later because uh, it's already getting to the point with all of these uh, like uh, Pell proposing 117% uh, property tax increase and so forth. Uh, if, if you don't start somewhere uh, it's going to get awfully bad someday. Uh, it, it, it's just 100% of 100% or 48% of 50% uh, or whatever and it, it, it keeps rolling over and it's getting more and more expensive. Um, and I'd also like to uh, remind uh, various speakers here that come to the uh, podium that uh, there's been some mention of college students and that and so forth. They do have the right by Supreme Court decision to vote in the city that they intend college at. So if they're living in a dormitory, they do have the right to vote. And I have seen it at polls, various, not necessarily to Scranton University, but a, a religious school in my neighborhood. And they ship the bus down, bus loads of people down. So they do have the right to vote uh, where they're attending school and in a dormitory. So it's something to consider uh, uh, if nothing is being contributed to the city upkeep, then uh, it's, it's a shame. And I'll give the golden parrot to our Congress. I wish they'd uh, just start to agree that children need to be fed. Once again, everybody loves the fetus, but they absolutely hate the baby. Don't feed it, don't educate it, don't do anything. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you. Don't forget the bok bok. Is there anyone else? Thank you. Good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher, resident taxpayer. Good, Good evening. evening. I'll start off tonight with um, 6A. Uh, I don't know if, it would, if you have legal authority to do that, but I'm sure the solicitor either knows or could find out. I would ask that you would amend that before final passage to require that the payment be made. I know there's a lot of paperwork after your approval, but there are properties, as I've brought up here before, that have not paid in over three years. And not only have they not paid the purchase price that you have so kindly uh, approved for them, but they have not paid their taxes either on those properties, and we're losing a lot of money. And so I would like that you would say maybe if, if the property, if the title has not been filed, and the tax is paid uh, within a year that it goes back uh, and becomes eligible for sale to some other person. Um, and then now back on parking meters, I guess. I, next week I promise to have a new subject. But um, I did notice last night I went to the end, and I was sort of disappointed nobody from from council came last night to the um, study commission for the, the county government. It was an interesting meeting, and there'll be another interesting meeting, I think, Monday night, but it will be in Moscow. But I did park on those parking meters where the heads were taken off, and they are now back on. So, in fact, Republic has, is apparently installing the, the meter heads per file of Council 100 of 2009, which I might add, um, 
I never made a copy of it because when the redevelopment, or the, yeah, the redevelopment, the parking authority had it on their website and they always updated it and I just always went there because it was easier to have it electronically. I never copied it. But I also believe that the fee was $20 and I don't know if it was um, statute that they could, if you paid in the first 24 hours it was $10 and then after the first day it was $20. But again, um, last week I, I spoke with a woman who wrote the letter that received the ticket on the Labor Day weekend, and she said she paid $25. So I know you asked Mrs. Craig to, to check into that. So did we get an answer on, on what the fee is for the? Excuse me, Mrs. Evans, in, in order to know what the fee is, we need to know what the ticket was for. There is, in fact, a fine of $25 if you're in permit parking. So if we know what the person received the fine for, we could absolutely verify that. Okay. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the revenue from those. Uh, last month, uh, on the 19th, Mrs. Evans, you gave a report for the month of July. Did you ever get the uh, magistrate citation revenue for that month? I don't believe so, but we can certainly get that. Okay, and the revenue, the expenses that, that were taken out, were, did they include the percentage that goes to Pango and the percentage that they get back as for the operation? Um, I don't want to answer that because I don't have the information in front of me and I don't want to say something that could be incorrect. So I'll yeah. bring all of that Good. with me for next, next week, week and I'd be happy to share it with you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and will you be doing that monthly? I mean, I know you said they're doing their reporting monthly. Yes. So they should have August and probably September by now, I would think, as, as well. Um, Mr. Loscom, did you get the breakdown of the fire and uh, of the fire and firefighters and police? Supreme Actually, Court I'm, I'm still working on it. I don't have a, a complete. Well, what, breakdown. Where is the doc? Who has the the document? A court award? It's, it's in it? a number of different areas, but the problem is. I haven't had the ability to, to sit down on a long-term basis to get it. I mean, this has been ongoing. They, they still, they're still working on some numbers as we speak. It's, it's not a finalized item yet. That's Do you sp and just uh, specifically, uh, j just for my specifics on, on getting the information, what specifically are you looking for? Well. First of all, the numbers to whom the award applies by the, the quantity uh, of employees. I would like to know the breakdown of how much of it is, is salary, how much of it is uh, expenses that are related to salary, such as longevity. I would like to know um, if that increase from in the pension from 50% to 70% and any, anything, anything that increases the, the payment, anything that will cause a cash award, I would like to see itemized and how it's. Uh, the, as far as the pension, 50 to 70 percent, I, I don't understand what you mean. The pension but, is 50 percent. But the, the, that's what I, we spoke, I spoke about this last week. The, uh, one of the articles in the paper last week said. That's something that they were looking for. That's not, has nothing to do with this award at this point. Uh, are you positive? That's I'm positive. That's that's not even an agreement at this point. This is something that they're the current uh, firefighters are looking for to increase pension, just like teachers or state well, troopers oh. or whatever. But but currently, uh, firefighters pension and police officers pension is 50 percent. There was a handful years ago that received a 10 percent incentive from the city. Uh, that's the only additional. But oh. there's there's no seventy percent. I'll, I'll dig that out of my file and and bring it next week too. Sure. Okay. Thank I'm just you. trying to get as much specific yeah. information as yeah. I can and and, well, and relaying it back and forth. It's been everything that adds up to the twenty two million. Okay. Thank you. 
Let me just chime in and uh, say something quick because I know uh, Mr. Schumacher asked me last week about fees associated with borrowing for the uh, police and fire unions uh, award as well as the MMO and any possible other um, package that was being put together. I did speak with uh, Mike Judge from CaseCon uh, and I specifically asked him about fees and he replied to me that it would be tough to uh, estimate what the fee would actually be without a finalized package or a finalized deal and and a, a, There's uh, Janie Montgomery Scott, and there are two other um, two other prospective lenders. Uh, right now, I, I know that Janie Montgomery Scott is kind of on hold until there's a budget. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's okay. Good evening, City Council. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Tom Lunvarsky. Last week, I got a phone call from a citizen of Scranton who had a suggestion for settling with the police and firemen. He asked if he could send the plan to me to present to City Council. Seeing as Mr. Waskin's name was mentioned in it, I gave it to Jack. He has the feeling that since police and firemen are citizens of the city, that they would be receptive to most any kind of a plan to help out the city. I hope either this administration or the one coming in will sit down with the police and firemen and try to reach some kind of an agreement where we could perhaps save on closing fees and consultants and lawyers and make some kind of an arrangement with them. I noticed that the county is buying a tandem dump truck. I think it's over $100,000. As you know, I contribute. I'm taxed by the county. And part of my money will go to pay for that truck. Now, probably the only time that truck will be on a Scranton street is when it's passing through. I hope City Council will put forth a, a good effort to get the commuter tax. I'm glad to see you've straightened out the parking meters I hope that you're working with the parking authority now for the garages. And thank you for your attention. Thank, thank you. you. And Mr. Mr. Ngorski, as I was coming into the meeting tonight, uh, gave me this envelope. So I haven't even looked at it yet. And thank you, Mr. Ngorski. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Um, Good evening. Just like to uh, address the uh, the front page story on the Scranton Times from this morning in regards to Pell's uh, new projection of an estimated uh, twenty million dollar deficit for next year. Uh, when we go back a little bit to July, they uh, had sent a letter down to Council. Uh, at the time, uh, looking ahead, they had projected an eighteen million dollar deficit uh, and also suggested a one hundred and seventeen percent tax increase. Uh, to cover that deficit. Um, now, after learning that the city is obligated to increase its uh, municipal uh, or minimal pension contribution by two million next year, um, they come up with the result of uh, 20 million. That's also including uh, nearly two million dollars in uh, pilot payments that will uh, likely uh, not occur next year. 
uh, $1.2 million in departmental savings that likely will not occur next year. Uh, they go on to talk about our uh, on-street parking meter enhancement revenue, uh, which is expected to be down approximately $300,000. Uh, the MBROs, uh, market-based revenue opportunity, uh, likely to fall short of its goal by roughly $250,000. Um, they go on to, to conclude that the city does hope to uh, end this year with a deficit of about $300,000. Um, however, it, it is looking as if that may not happen if the city has an inability to obtain any borrowing to cover pension costs and, and uh, moving forward the Supreme Court ruling, um, you know, and a lot of other things that the city is obligated to uh, come up with funding for. Now, obviously, a lot of this uh, comes down to the city's inability to generate revenue, and uh, we, we certainly, going back to the recovery plan, council did uh, offer many suggestions and, and, and did uh, implement many revenue enhancements that, unfortunately, were never implemented uh, properly, I believe, uh, from day one. And, and, and what I mean by implemented properly was I, I don't feel that they were um, enforced the way they should have been. I think that uh, the administration sort of got off to a late start. And what I, what I see occurring here, and it, it's, it's kind of frightening to me, but I, what I do see um, arising here is I do see uh, blame coming back once again to city council. And I think tonight it needs to be made quite clear that that is not the case. Um, when you look at that recovery plan and you look at the budget, uh, you look at the, uh, the mandate impact summary and all the things that, that uh, this council did, uh, the finance chair, the council president, all the, uh, the, the figures and, and the revenue enhancements that you put into place by working with uh, you know, your, your solicitor, Attorney Hughes, and, and all those involved to make this happen. Um, it's, it's very troubling to me that this administration um, didn't jump on board on this. You know, we, we thought we had cooperation last year, and, and we thought that we would realize these things. Obviously, with, with some of these new revenue enhancements, um, you know, there's, there's going to be some, some obstacles and, and some things may not, to come in for, come, may not come into fruition right away. Um, but for the most part, you hope for success and you hope for these things to, to be realized. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case. Um, the, the biggest one to me is our, is our pilots. And it seems repetitive that we, you know, constantly, you know, revisit this issue. But... Um, we, we were hoping to generate, according to the, the summary here, about $1.4 million this year. And that's not going to happen. And it goes back to the, the administration's uh, lack of sense of urgency to, go to come forward and, and pursue payments in lieu of taxes. And I, I want to go back to the tuition tax proposal or suggestion I made to council. Um, that may be our only, only way of, of, of getting increased payments in lieu of taxes. Um, I, I, I hate to see it be used as a, a bargaining chip, but we may have come to that point. It, it, it's quite clear that after all these years, uh, the nonprofits um, aren't willing to cooperate to some degree. They, I, you know, not every nonprofit is, is, uh, you know, ha has been uncooperative. I, I want to make that clear. But you know, there are there are certain nonprofit entities that have sort of slammed the door in the city's face and. You know, when you take a look at the services that the city provides, uh, you know, my suggestion's been criticized a few weeks by a speaker, and I think Mr. Dobson made a good point tonight. You know, these, these, these children or these students that, quote, have been, were in diapers uh, when, when the city's financial situation sort of arose, as Mr. Dobson made a very good note tonight, I'm glad he brought it up, these are the same individuals who, that were in diapers 20 years ago that have the ability to vote in this city whether they're from New Jersey, Philadelphia, New York, Pittsburgh, wherever. They're, if they live here in the city while they're attending our institutions, they have the ability, the ability to cast a vote. And with that said, I, I think it's only fair that a 1% tax be attached to a tuition. But I, I just hope that we continue to pursue vigorously uh, a lot of the enhancements uh, that, that the city hoped to realize. Um, I, I'm not sure what the city's plan is in, in re relation to the, the uh, commuter tax, but I do think that's something that we need to revisit again. Um, I know that I believe Pell had, had mentioned in, in the article this morning that refinancing the city's debt may not be a possibility. I'm not sure if maybe um, a member of council can clarify that. I know that was something that's been brought up. Uh, the amusement tax, I know that we fell behind on that, um, and, and I just want to end, end this evening with one question. Um, has the city at this point received uh, its payment from Live Nation? 
from the amusement tax. I know that was uh, a story. Uh, it did receive um, the first payment of $19,000, and there will be more forthcoming. So I do see that uh, the amusement tax is going to generate revenue, um, not only uh, at, by the end of this year, but I think um, more significantly next year and throughout the future years. Thank you. And to conclude, I, um, I'll, this will be it. Uh, you know, again, not to, to, to continue to be repetitive, but when you, when you do go back and, and you take a look at, at uh, the work that went into putting this recovery plan and, and the 2013 budget together, I, I, I would hope that the residents of this city would remember um, how you had to go through a lot of, uh, you know, I guess ropes, you could say, to ensure that the burden wasn't significant as Pell wanted it to be on the taxpayers of this city. Remember, Pell was looking at nearly a 85 to 100 percent tax increase, and this council did everything that it, it could possibly do to lessen that burden. So when, when we want to look at where we could where we could really be at this point in time, we we think things are bad now. I do think we've come a long way. Uh, there's no doubt about that. A lot of good things have happened. I I know that when you're a city that faces these financial challenges, you, you, you would find it hard to say that. But I do think a lot of good things have happened. And I, and I do think that uh, there is some light at the end of this tunnel. But it's, as I said, it, it's cooperation. It's, it's uh, following through on things that council implements. And uh, I, again, I thank you and commend you for everything you've done. But I do not think that moving forward, this, this uh, dilemma that we're going to be facing should be placed on your shoulders, because you did everything to avoid uh, bankruptcy, um, hefty tax increases, and a loss of services on the residents of this city. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? 5A, motions. Oh. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> Chrissy's back. <laughs> oh, he's back. I see that. We got Wallace at it. We got Wallace. Second half. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Chrissy. True. You know, I'm not really an economist at all. But government shut down. NASA shut down. We got some weirdo from Texas claiming that. We should have martial law so we could put in the bill and make it in effect and it could be done over day. And it seems like that knowing that the government is shut down, everything is shut down. But business as usual as we you know, we go to work every day and government is not down, but look at all the red numbers. All of them. Um I'm not so sure there's any return from this, honestly. This is beyond, and it's not running as fast as it should, but at least it is moving a little. So I don't know if they are ever coming back or what's going to happen, because I have never in my lifetime ever heard about government shutting down due to a financial crisis. You know, you know where I come from, you sit at the table and, and you discuss back and forth, back and forth. And you don't stand down until you have a solution to the, to, to the problem. But, you know, they're so arrogant and so proud of themselves and all that beautiful work they're doing for you Americans that they think it's okay that they can just, you know, go home and, yeah, play golf, you know, take a vacation on your tax dollars, because you're paying them, right? And look at all these red numbers, that's all debt. And out on the side here, you see, yes, some of the numbers, I don't know if it's absolutely correct, I don't know. But don't look. It's game over. That's my learning. It's been for I just don't understand that now. Maybe they don't just don't want to face it. And it's done on purpose. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And Obama's gonna fix the problems, right? Because, yes we can. We can change, right? We can change into something red, you know, something communistic, something fascist, under the same tent. That's what we're looking at. So it is game over. It is. Well, be close to yourself and then those you love for the times ahead. That's the only one you can count on. People you don't know, well, stay away from them for a while until things settle down. Because to begin with, you have no friends except those you have known for a very long time. Everybody else is dangerous, potentially. Don't let anyone into your groups. If you have a little group, don't let strangers in. If you don't know them, avoid them. That's your best option. Because we're all going to live on the streets. <laughs> yeah. Have fun with that. God bless you. It is not the truth to suggest that there are not enough voters, members of Congress, that would vote right now today to open this government. It's something called a continuing resolution, but it's a bill that you put on the floor that has been passed already by Republicans and Democrats in the United States Senate. This is not an idea of anyone over another person. Republican and Democratic senators have already voted for this clean bill that we could vote on today. We have martial law, what that means, and my colleagues know what it means, is that you can put a bill on in just minutes. Five A motions. Councilman Rogan, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Yes, thank you. Just a few brief comments, um, two on some outstanding issues and one on an agenda item. Um, the first is regarding the letter that was from Pell that was reported in the newspaper. Um, and I hate to say, unfortunately, that I was right on these items when it was time to vote on a budget and a recovery plan. Um, as you know, I was the only member to vote against the recovery plan and the budget because of the concerns of revenue not being realized. And unfortunately, my concerns have played out. Um, some of the, the items in here, reduction in pilot revenue, 1.75 million. Reduction in departmental savings, 1.2 million. Uh, reduction in the parking enhancement, 300,000. And reduction in the market-based revenue is a quarter of a million. Um, those items, along with others in a commuter tax, um, make a, a deficit the size of our neighboring town's budgets, um, actually more than that. And next year's, when next year's budget comes up, I think that when voting and when looking at ideas, we need to make sure that all the items placed in the budget actually are materialized. Um, if the administration is considering pursuing a commuter tax again, um, they should petition the courts now. They shouldn't wait until a budget is voted on to petition the courts. Um, it was done completely backwards in the last time. I, I don't know how the administration expected council to vote on putting an item in that wasn't approved yet. So if that is something that the mayor wants to put in the budget, it should be, um, it should go to the courts now before budget time begins. Um, another item, and actually these two kind of blend into each other, um, everyone knows one of the departments that I am very critical of and I look very closely at is the Department of Public Works. And Pell has been advocating for an increase in the garbage fee. And that's actually something that I support in a way, but I think we need to reform the way people in the city of Scranton pay for garbage. Um, currently, the garbage fee is the same for everyone in the, in the city of Scranton. Whether it's a single widow living off Social Security or whether it's somebody, a family of six or a family of 12, making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year and obviously having much more garbage than that single widow. Um, I think we need to look at going to a per bag fee in the city. 
Um, it may be a difficult transition to get it um, up and running, but I definitely think it's something that needs to be on the table. Simply increasing a garbage fee um, across the board isn't fair. It, it's not fair to, especially to senior citizens who don't have a lot of garbage and, um, and, and don't use the service as much as, as other people do. Um, additionally, um, some other community, neighboring communities that have gone to per bag fees um, have seen increased success with the recycling programs. <coughs> um, when people are forced to pay for how much they actually put in their garbage, they have a much bigger incentive to recycle, which is not only good for the city because it saves us money in fees at the dump, it's also good for the environment because all of these items are, are being used again. So I hope that's something that, that can be considered and, and discussed um, regarding um, the garbage fee. Um, Next today, and another, my full-time job, I attended a senior fair today, and much of the talk um, uh, with the senior citizens at this fair was about Senate Bill 76. And I've spoke many times at these meetings about uh, Bill 76, which for those of you who don't know, it's the property tax elimination bill for school districts. Um, this bill would be a huge help for the city of Scranton. Um, in the city, the school tax is by far the largest portion of your tax bill. Um, the city always seems to get the blame for the tax bill because it's, when you read your bill, it's lumped together as city and school district. But the school district is by far the much larger portion of that bill. And if Senate Bill 76 were to pass the Senate and the House could reconsider it, and if it was signed into law, that would eliminate property taxes. To, for, for schooling, which would enable the city to generate more revenue, and people would still be paying less in property taxes, and they'd be able to keep their homes. Unfortunately, our state senator, John Blake, has flat out uh, refused to support this proposal. Um, this goes with Mr. Blake's track record of not doing anything to help the city of Scranton, um, and I hope that he would reconsider. Many of the neighboring senators of both parties, Democrats and Republicans, um, state representatives, I know Representative Flynn sent us a, mo um, a memo that he voted to eliminate property taxes, and we thank him for that. Um, but Senator Blake has refused to get on board with trying to help the, the property owners in Lackawanna County and in Scranton. So I hope that he would listen to the voters, and I would urge them to call Senator Blake and ask him to support, to sign on as a co-sponsor to Senate Bill 76. Um, finally, just one comment on item 5A regarding the towing. Um, I will be voting yes on this item tonight. Um, I do want to take a week to talk to some of the towing companies. Um, I haven't re none of them have reached out to me yet, so I think it would seems that it's agreeable to, to everyone. The only negative um, with this, and I understand the budget hole has to be filled with this $300,000 that was put in for the um, towing yard. That, that did not happen. Um, but by doing this in a one-time fashion, yes, the city gets $300,000, but for the next nine years, like 10 years, we won't receive any revenue. Well, actually, we will. Um, it's not going to be significant revenue, mm -hmm. but um, the city will receive, thanks to um, our attorney who negotiated this, uh, the city will receive uh, a certain portion of all the fees charged by the towers and each time the towers would increase those fees mm -hmm. then the amount coming into the city would increase as well and those funds I believe are going to be uh, delegated toward the purchase of police cars okay and and that's definitely definitely sounds like something that would be good um, to have at least some of the revenue coming in over the next few years um, but again, I will vote for it this week. I, I do want to reach out to um, the tow operators just to make sure that it's agreeable to them and it's agreeable to uh, everyone on the board and in the residents. So that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Loscombe, do you have comments or motions this evening? Uh, not really. The only thing I will comment on is I, I had the same questions that Mr. Rogan had as far as the towing, the, the length of time in that. Uh, you just clarified some information, but uh, you know I, I hope it's a win-win for everybody. Um, but you, Mrs. Evans, you mentioned that it, when the towers increase their fees, that we would get a the increased proportion of it. Yes. I 
I don't I didn't get a chance to read it but I thought the fees were set by the city do are they allowed to increase their own fees or if you look at the ordinance attached is exhibit a is the contract then attached to exhibit a is exhibit one and exhibit two exhibit two is the increase of the fees over the period of ten years for every three years and it shows it sets forth thereon what is what portion of the fee the city will receive on each of that in increments of three years I believe it goes for zero to three years I think it's three to six and uh, uh, six to ten okay I do see so that now. I okay see that so package. that's if you look at that you know you can review that next week you'll see the contract that's exhibit a um, right now my memory from exhibit one but exhibit two is the one that sets the increase of the fees and what share the city will get now what happened was when the ordinance was sent down it had in the original ordinance that the that those funds would be placed into the account to purchase the police cars in my opinion that that ordinance was contrary to the home rule charter that says that each ordinance shall have only one title and one subject matter I wrote that back to attorney Kelly he then subsequently revised it and sent it down so and he said if I want to if we want it that way instead of adopting the ordinance that way I'll have to draft the ordinance so I'll draft the ordinance hopefully for next week that this will be introduced tonight but then that the increases will be specifically set sent into that special account and that goes back to an ordinance I believe uh, ordinance number 21 of I think it was I don't know if it was 2004 mm -hmm. that those fees or anything come in not only from that but also grants for that for police cars go into that account so that'll be a second piece of legislation for the increases over the next 10 years that that funds will come in and they'll go into that special account for the purchase of uh, uh, cars you know for the police department sure there we go I'm glad okay. that's the first I got to see that I'm okay. glad you pointed that out but uh, just another quick question out of curiosity it's it may be irrelevant but suppose my brother has a tow towing company he's not on the list I have an accident I am NOT allowed to use him I would have to use one of these towers not that I have a brother that has a towing company but I, I'm just you know being a devil's advocate here just like you know uh, you have a car accident and these insurance companies try to direct you to certain body shops but you have your right to go to whoever you want mr. Loscombe I think I can answer that I I remember when we debated the idea of a city lot um, I spoke to many of the towers and, and people involved in the industry and if you're in an accident and you're there you could call whoever you want they don't have to be on the city list or not this more pertains to if there's a an abandoned vehicle or there's an accident and for instance say you're incapacitated and you can't communicate that you want you know Blossom's towing to get you um, it would go to the next person on the list it's a rotating list uh -huh. um, but if somebody has a preference they get to choose who they want and also if this does doesn't apply just so that the people out there know this doesn't apply to if you break down or anything of that nature this is just police a uh, police towing excellent and I just wanted to get that out there so yeah you know I know there's people with those questions so very good thank you and councilman Joyce do you have any comments or motions tonight yes I um, I wanted to begin tonight by addressing the recovery plan and Paul's letter to us um, whether or not you agree with the provisions of the recovery plan or what was put in it a recovery plan was necessary and I'll and I'll tell you why without the recovery plan we probably wouldn't have been able to get a tax anticipation note this year we probably wouldn't have been able to obtain any borrowing to cover unfunded debt from previous years if we didn't have a recovery plan in place and we shot that down what would happen 
is that the lights would be turned out on this city. The city would just go bankrupt. There would be no money to pay employees. There would be no money to pay bills that were already months overdue. They would have shut off the gas and electricity in City Hall and, and all the fire stations and, poli and, and police headquarters and the DPW facility. So, you know, whether or not you agree with the recovery plan or the provisions in it, it was something that was necessary. Now, some of the provisions in it, um, market-based revenue opportunities. This was something that was actually suggested by Pell. It's something that hasn't materialized yet. And really, there's been a lack of execution in the administration to follow through on it. And that's something that city council can control. We can't control how fast things get implemented or if they get implemented at all or, or when the ball gets rolling and when the ball doesn't get rolling. So, you know, I can't say that the administration is at fault for everything because they're not. But are there things that they could have been faster on? Yes. Now, um, in this letter, that Pell had sent, and as most people know, there was an article in the Scranton Times about it today. Pell projects that the city is facing a $20 million deficit in 2014. Actually, to be more specific, it's $19.73 million. So, really, in their suggestions, they say options available are to increase the real estate property tax, an increase to the resident EIT, and or an increase to the garbage fee. Well, I did a few quick calculations here while the council meeting was going on, but I still paid attention to the speakers. Anyhow, with all being said, this is what Pell is suggesting to us and the administration. This, uh, a $19.73 million deficit. Right now, the city collects oh, approximately $16 million in real estate taxes. If you do the math, if, we, if the real estate taxes were to be increased alone, it would be roughly 125 to 130 percent tax increase. That's their suggestion to us. Also, regarding the EIT, which is currently at, well, the city EIT is at 2.4 percent, and there's a 1 percent EIT for the school district, which means that's why 3.4 percent uh, earned income tax gets taken out of everyone's check that's employed. It's about $800,000 of revenue for every 0.1% to increase that tax. So, if you were to increase that to cover $20 million, it would be a 2.5% increase in the earned income tax, which would mean that workers that live in the city of Scranton would pay 5.9% of an earned income tax if we followed that suggestion. Personally, I think if taxes, real estate taxes were to increase 125% or the earned income tax were to increase to 5.9%, there would be a mass exodus of people out of this city. People would probably as far as real estate taxes, people would probably just leave their homes. You wouldn't be able to sell them. Anyways, as far as what could be done to lower any tax increase, it's, it's almost inevitable, inevitable to say that there, won't, or that there will be a, a tax increase. It's, it's going to happen. What I'm trying to do is make that increase the lowest possible amount for city homeowners. 
I was elected to represent the city of Scranton. I was, I was elected by people of the, that vote in the city of Scranton. I was not elected by Pell. Anyhow, these are my suggestions. I suggest that the city should pursue the commuter tax. In previous conversation with Mayor Doherty, he had said that the city would pursue the com commuter tax. And also, Pell had stated that the city is obliged to pursue the commuter tax since it's a part of the recovery plan. This is $5.7 million worth of revenue if the courts allow the city to, implement, to levy this tax. Also, in speaking with Mayor Doherty in the past, he informed me that the city um, would be or may be eligible to receive $2 million extra in liquid fuels money next year. Um, he worked with Senator Blake to obtain this and it would be earmarked for parking authority debt which is currently paid out of our general fund anyways to the tune of over $2 million. So it's almost like we're saving, so it's basically like we're saving $2 million off a projected deficit. And another thing that I've been pushing for is a scoop out refinancing. Now I know that Pell had stated that they do not favor this or they don't consider this a good option. However, I, I did speak with Mike Judge from CaseCon, and a proposal has been put together to include a $5 million savings in 2014 in a scoop out refinance, the borrowing necessary to pay off the firefighter and, or firefighter and police Supreme Court award and to cover the borrowing for the MMO in 2013. This deal, um, there are two prospective lenders. Uh, one he is waiting for some more feedback from. Another wants to set up a meeting for next week to discuss the proposal in more detail. So with what I've mentioned so far, you have $5 million of possible savings in, in uh, the scoop out refinance, $5.7 million in a commuter tax, and $2 million in liquid fuels, which is $12.7 million off of the 19.73, which brings it down to about $7 million that we're looking at that we would have to fill, obviously, with a, some sort of a increase in taxes. Now, um, there also may be cuts made to the budget. The administration has asked all department heads to cut 10% of their departmental expenditures, and, any, and of course any money that has been cut out would also be deducted from that seven million. So, <clears throat> That's what I'm looking at, and that's what I'm in favor of. Any massive increase to real estate taxes or the EIT, I would be very much against. What I'm trying to do is the last thing I do on city council is save a couple hundred dollars for every homeowner in the city of Scranton. And that's my goal, and I'm going to work as hard as I could to achieve that goal. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. And um, if I might just piggyback on that a minute. I think you all know, and it was mentioned earlier, that um, for this current year, Pell had recommended uh, might have been an 89% tax increase. And City Council did not allow that to happen. City Council was able to bring it down to 22%. And 
I agree with Mr. Joyce. There are alternatives here that must be pursued because I will not approve a massive tax increase. I know that uh, certainly Pell believes it to be the answer, but I don't. And I think, you know, you can, you can certainly, in Pell's mind, try to levy such a significant tax. But frankly, I don't believe it would ever, ever be collected. People just can't afford that. So uh, I am hoping that these measures that are being proposed by council are going to be taken seriously by the administration. Because again, I will not approve I will not approve any proposed three-digit tax increase um, as Pell is recommending. I do agree with something that um, my colleague Mr. Rogan has said, and that is that it is impossible for the city to pass a budget before it can go to court to petition for a commuter tax. We cannot produce a budget and not know whether or not a commuter tax is approved and to be included. And this is not an issue that we can guess at. A recovery plan is nothing more than guesses and projections. But a budget has to be far more concrete. And the people that are going to have to oversee that budget, I think, need to be more actively involved this time. And that is not to say, uh, you know, the, the new council or a new mayor at this point, because after all, they must be elected. But I think, you know, we have council members who are going to remain in 2014, and they will be charged with carrying out that budget. And so they must have an active voice in planning what's going to occur next year. Um, but again, I just want to emphasize that it is impossible for the administration or city council to craft a budget and pass a budget that does not contain a definitive answer on the commuter tax. And so a budget can be proposed, the mayor can certainly propose his budget, and that can be uh, presented to the court. But I cannot pass a budget that does not contain firm, definite numbers. Um, in addition, I have a brief update regarding the request made by Ms. Schumacher during our last city council meeting. Republic Parking System was contacted on Friday, October 4th, and it agreed to place stickers indicating the days of operation on all parking meters. You're welcome. Uh, next, I wish to remind the public quickly of the facts regarding the Perry Avenue Park in North Scranton. Scranton City Council did not approve a grant to construct this park because the city of Scranton had absolutely no funds to maintain it. In fact, the administration began closing city pools in 2010 because there wasn't funding to repair and maintain them, even before the Perry Avenue Park was proposed by Mayor Doherty. As of the summer of 2013, Kapaus Avenue Pool, the Novembrino Complex Pools, and two others remained closed. Further, there are no funds available in either the capital or the annual operating budgets to maintain many of our existing parks, let alone the newest Perry Avenue Park. 
Like all of us who reside in Scranton and its neighboring communities, the editor of the Scranton Times newspaper undoubtedly is aware of the severe financial problems our city has faced for years. Although he fails to offer plausible solutions and has consistently ignored the Doherty debt that was born in 2002, swelled each year thereafter, and came home to roost in 2012. Contrary to the editor's skewed opinions, my council colleagues and I are pleased by the construction of Perry Avenue Park and acknowledge the work of the many generous volunteer groups who made it possible. Further, we hope that these groups will be able to maintain the park and equipment well into the future because it is clear to all but the Scranton Times editor that the city of Scranton has no financial ability to do so. Uh, finally, I received a letter from a resident of Harrison Avenue regarding handicapped parking. Um, Mrs. Craig, can you provide me, please, with two copies of the Handicap Parking Ordinance, and I'm going to submit the details of this citizen's request to our office following tonight's meeting, and we will contact the individual with the appropriate information. And that's it. 5B, repealing file of council number 37 of 2011 as amended, entitled, Establishing the list of authorized towing companies for the city of Scranton and establishing the rules, qualifications, and standards to be followed by all said towing companies. Establishing fines and penalties for towing and fees related to this ordinance. By establishing the list of authorized towing companies for the city of Scranton, establishing the rules, qualifications, and standards to be followed by all said towing companies establishing fines and penalties for towing and fees related to this ordinance and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to enter into a 10-year contract for towing and related services in the city of Scranton in exchange for a one-time payment of $300,000. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its project committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6A, reading by title, file of council number 49, 2013, an ordinance. Sale of tax delinquent property at the corner of Linden Street and Taylor Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, to <coughs> Linden Taylor, LLC, 56 Ledge Drive, Lakeville, Pennsylvania, 18438, for the sum of $2,500. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Do we second. have a second? On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Um, and perhaps we could take a look in the uh, forthcoming week at whether um, there can be an amendment placing a, a timeline on what needs to be paid yes. after purchase. I know Ms. Schumacher had mentioned this mm -hmm. during um, citizens' participation that um, a number of the properties that purportedly had been sold, um, I guess either didn't file um, a title or a deed and um, had delinquent taxes. So, okay. if, you know, maybe we take a look into that and see if there's anything that can be added. It's been a long time since I did one of these, but I believe this is a purchase under what's commonly known as the Pittsburgh plan. Mm -hmm. And that after this is approved, then it's advertised and there's a here it's presented to court. There's a hearing date, it's advertised anyone can come in and then bid on this property mm -hmm. and it goes to the highest bidder i believe I, and as i said it's been it's been years since i've done anything like this probably decades but anyway uh i think that uh, that might be in the court order 
that if they okay. don't come up with the money within 30 days or whatever it is, that, uh, that it's null and void, then it can be put back out to bid. We'll have to check on that, but uh, you know, usually that uh, there's a time limit is once the court issues its order approving the sale, mm -hmm. either to the original bidder or to anybody, anyone who comes in and bids, that the money has to be paid in a certain period of time. I see. And while you're, um, while you're able to take a look at the Pittsburgh plan, I know you had mentioned to me uh, a very good idea that you had concerning these vacant properties. And, um, you know, can you keep that in mind as you're looking through uh, <laughs> in that it could it become a real possibility for the city to pursue? I'll give that to my twin brother who works 24 hours a day in the office. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take care of that, no problem. Thank you. Seventh order, no business at this time. If no one has any further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.